a one-sided limit and why do we need one-sided limits? So we've already seen a few situations where limits at a point do not exist, um, but let's talk about uh, some more notation. Okay, we've got what we call a left-handed limit and a right-handed limit. This is on your paper, but you'll notice that there's a little something extra here. Beside the number that we are approaching, there's a little negative. Okay, that's not a typo. The negative is not supposed to be in front of the number. Okay, it's not talking about a negative number. It's talking about approaching it from the left. This is negative to the left. And then this one, the right-handed limit has a plus after the number. That means that you're looking at a right-handed limit. Okay, um, so you just need to know that notation. And typically, when I write it, it's kind of hard to, to put it here in this program, uh, but it's more of like a superscript on the number. So if I was trying to denote the limit as we approach 2 from the left of f of x, I try to make the negative um, at the top of my number so that I don't think that it's supposed to be a negative number, but I do realize that that is a um, left-handed limit, okay? Uh, same thing for right-handed. And when I do that, that would be x as we approach 2, and the plus would be at the top of the 2, okay? Um, okay, so let's look at situation number 1, okay? Here is an example where the limit, as we approach 0, of this kind of weird function, x over the absolute value of x, okay, x over the absolute value of x, this limit does not exist. We're going to talk about why here in a second. Now, um, I gave you the graph. This is actually the graph of the function x over the absolute value of x. So let's think about why, why the graph comes out this way. Okay? Think of a negative number. Let's say negative 3. Okay, if x is negative 3 and we plug it into this function, we've got negative 3 on the top. The absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So we've got negative 3 divided by positive 3. same number for the positive. So any time your x value is negative, your y value from this function is going to be negative 1. Any time it's positive, let's use positive 2 as an example. Plug in 2, you have 2 over the absolute value of 2. Well, that's 2 over 2, which is 1, the positive 1. Any positive x value is going to give you a y value of positive 1 for this particular function. Zero. just the overall limit as we approach zero. When we're approaching it from the left, if we're following our function, what are we headed towards? Negative one, okay? So our limit, our left-handed limit, the limit as we approach zero from the left of x over the absolute value of x is negative one. As we approach it from the right, okay, we're following along our function here. What y value are we headed towards? Positive 1. If your left-handed and right-handed limits are not the same number, then your limit does not exist. Okay? You can talk about the left-handed and right-handed limits. Okay, those numbers exist. But this limit, as we approach zero, does not exist because we are approaching two different um, values. From the left side and from the right side, we're approaching different numbers, so that limit does not exist. Okay? The left-handed, right-handed do, but the two-sided limit, just the limit as we approach zero, does not. Situation number two, and we looked at this one yesterday, okay? We looked at this function yesterday. Um, the limit as we approach two of one over x minus two, well, what do 
what's going on. They have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So as we approach from the left, okay, I'm going to do this for all of them. The limit as we approach 2 from the left of our function, and I'm just going to use f of x instead of rewriting 1 over x minus 2, is it's headed down towards negative infinity. Okay, it's headed down towards negative infinity. And technically, infinity is not a number, so it can't really be a limit. You're not headed towards a specific number, so technically that doesn't exist. Okay. As we approach it from the right, as we follow the right side of our graph, we are headed towards positive infinity. Now, you don't necessarily have to put the plus in front of it. I'm just trying to emphasize. Okay, so this two-sided limit does not exist because, again, we're headed towards different values. Now, a similar but slightly different scenario uh, is if we're looking at 1 over x squared, okay, another rational function. This one has the vertical asymptote at 0. So its limit, its left-handed limit, as we approach 0, its left-handed limit is positive infinity. Its right-handed limit is also positive infinity. Okay, so even though those technically agree with each other, okay, both of them are headed towards positive infinity, the same infinity, this limit still does not exist because, and the explanation is right there, because your function increases or decreases without bound. Okay, that means that there is no end to uh, this function. It's going to keep increasing. Alright, I've had to explain infinity before. Again, think about the biggest number that you can possibly think of. Well, add one to it. you got a bigger number. Okay, it never ends. Um, so it's not actually, you're not approaching one specific number. Okay, for it to be a limit, it's got to be approaching one specific number. It's not. Okay, uh, it can continue to increase. So even though those one-sided limits agree, that that limit does not exist. Okay. Now, the third scenario is kind of weird. You don't run into this one this much. Okay. Um, it's more like they're going to straight up just say to you that this is happening and you just got to know that the limit doesn't exist. So we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of pi over x. Now, here is a graph okay, that came from uh, the textbook that I was pulling this from. But I want to show you, um, because I haven't given you your calculators yet and won't for a little while yet, um, I want to show you what happens if we graph this in our calculator. Uh, let's see here, I need to make sure that I'm in radian mode. Okay. Now, if I just graph it right here, I mean, it kind of looks like I have a limit. Okay, if I'm looking right here, it looks like I have zero. Um, I can zoom in a little bit. I'm going to change my window so that it kind of goes along with their window here from negative 2 to positive 2. And uh, I'll go with the same thing for the y values. Oops. Negative 2. Okay. Even if I zoom in, <coughs> Still, I mean, it looks kind of weird, but I can't really nail down the fact that, well, is it zero? Is it not zero? Is there something else going on? What's happening here is something that we call oscillating behavior. Okay? Oscillating behavior. So, right here, the closer we get to zero, these y values are bouncing back and forth faster and faster. And they've got the table here to kind of uh, illustrate to you that give you some. Oscillating behavior 
you can't nail it down. So um, this limit does not exist because the function oscillates between uh, negative one and one as you're approaching, in this case, zero, okay? So uh, really the only time this is gonna come up, they're gonna give you a graph, okay? And you need to recognize, oh, that part of the graph is, is bouncing back and forth, so that limit doesn't exist, okay? So we're gonna look at um, some limits here, okay? We're gonna look at some limits here. We're gonna talk about one-sided and two-sided. So they want us to uh, determine the one-sided and two-sided limits at the points 0, 2, and 4. So let's start with 0. I'm going to start with my um, uh, left-sided limit. Okay, so as x approaches 0 from the left, and I'm just going to say of f of x because I don't know the function, piecewise function here. Okay, so on the left side of 0, that function is oscillating that one-sided limit does not exist because on the left side of zero, as I get closer and closer to zero, that function is oscillating. From the right, however, I have a limit. What's the limit as we approach zero from the right? Two. But, because one of our one-sided limits did not exist and because they did not agree with each other, then my two-sided limit, as I approach zero, the two-sided limit does not exist. So I'm following the graph. So let's look at the left-handed limit for 2, okay? And I think before I've kind of drawn brackets to kind of help myself zero in on what's going on. Okay, so I'm focusing on x equals 2 here. I'm approaching that from the left, so I'm following my graph from the left. Where are my y values headed? From the right, my y values are headed towards 1. So those two, or those one-sided limits exist, but my two-sided limit, as I approach 2, the two-sided limit does not exist. Finally, let's look at four. And I'm going to kind of draw brackets around it to kind of help you zoom, zone in on what we're talking about here. Okay, my left-handed limit as I approach four is two. I'm headed towards two. There, there is a hole at four, okay, but I am headed towards that y value there. From the right, I'm headed to the same y value, right? I'm still headed to 2. So my two-sided limit, this is the only two-sided limit that exists of the values that they were asking us about. My two-sided, my limit as I approach 4 from both the right and the left is 2. Now, f of 4 is undefined. Okay, I just want to throw that out there. Do what? It's not two, right? Okay, f of four is not two because I actually have a hole there. Oh no. Okay. 